Hey everyone, Jason Boone here from Premium Beat. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to archive your project in Premiere's Project Manager. We'll go over some reasons why you'd want to use this feature and take a look at all the options available to you when using the Project Manager. So let's get started. Now you can do a lot with Adobe Premiere's Project Manager. Easily collect and copy all of your assets to pass off to a client or a fellow editor, or just consolidate one of your projects to save space on a full hard drive. Whatever your situation, the Project Manager is a helpful tool. So I have a sample project here, and what I have is I have a whole project full of clips, audio clips, uh, graphics, two different sequences, and then all kinds of different video files here. Now let's say that we want to pass along this time-lapse shot to another editor so our editor can work with this shot. And you'll see in our, in our time-lapse sequence here, we have a video file and then an audio file. And that's all we have in this sequence here. So we wanna, we wanna basically archive or, or collect and copy all these files in the project file so we can hand it off to another editor. So let's see how we can do that with the project manager. To launch the project manager, select File Project Manager. And now you'll have the project manager dialog box, which has about four or five sections that we can look at here. In the first section, you're gonna to need to select your sequence. Now I said we only wanna basically archive our time-lapse sequence, but you could, if you had a whole project full of sequences here, as you can see, you can pick and choose which individual sequences you'd like to include in your archive. Now under resulting project, we have two main options here. We're gonna stick with collect files and copy to new location, but you also have the option to consolidate and transcode. And with consolidate and transcode, you're basically transcoding or retranscoding all of the, the clips or sequences, whatever you select here as your source. And then you can pick a format. And then when you go to your archive, you know if you wanted to pass these along to another editor in a higher, um, with, a, with a different codec, then here's where you would do that. But as I said, we're gonna simply collect the files and copy to new location. Now with our options here, you're gonna see some of these options are grayed out. But if we were to switch to consolidate and transcode, you have different options for each, each uh, method of, of your resulting project. So with these options, let's go through these. Exclude unused clips. Now this is simply gonna do exactly what it's saying. Whatever clips you are not, or whatever assets you are not using in your particular sequence, it's gonna leave those out for your archive. So we're going to have that selected because we're passing this along in theory to another editor who's going to be messing with our time-lapse clip. So the editor doesn't need any of the other content. So for include handles, this is grayed out, but for consolidate and transcode, this would basically, when we transcode out those files, it would give us a little bit of a buffer, a little bit of fat there with the 60 frames of handles. Okay, and we can select to choose our audio conform files, which if we deselected this, our editor, when he launches the project that we hand off to them, he's going to have to reconform those files, which may take him a little bit of time. Convert image sequence to clips if you choose, if this is relevant to your project, to consolidate and transcode. Include preview files. We'll have that selected. If you deselect that, again, your person that you pass along or if you relaunch this project later, you're going to have to re-render out those preview files, which could take some time. Rename media files to match clip names. Now this for us is gonna be important. If you look back here in our project panel, you can see that I've renamed this video clip to time-lapse from its original default name when it came out of the camera. So now when we archive it, it's going to rename it in our archive. So it'll be easy if we pass this along to another editor, they're gonna know exactly what's going on. They're not gonna be confused with any weird file names. And the last two options here, convert any After Effects compositions to clips and preserve alpha, which both are great features if you're doing a consolidate and transcode. And our last step here is we need to choose where we want our archive to be saved. So I'm gonna do this right on our desktop here. We'll select our location. Now down here you see the disk space section. This is gonna tell us how much space we have available on the disk that we've selected and then you can select calculate. And this is gonna give us, here's the original project size, which as, as I said before, is a pretty big project. If we were to archive this entire project, it would be around four, just under 43 gigabytes. But since we've selected only our time-lapse sequence with our few clips here, it's gonna be 5.36. So that's good. So let's go ahead and 
archive this. After your archive is complete, it's good to go and take a look at all of your assets here. And as you can see, it has all of our cache files, our preview files, the audio and video files, and the Premiere Pro project file. So let's go ahead and launch this project file and take a look at inside. And as you can see, it excluded all of the unused clips, and now we have a very clean project here. And it would be ready to hand off. We just copy all these assets over onto another hard drive or thumb drive or whatever, and then pass it along to our editor, and we're good to go. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality royalty free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.